it's like tough to always be like, hey, you should care about us. Like, it's just like mind blowing to think that we have to ask to be considered. This is TSN In Depth, I'm Rick Westhead, joined today by Logan Prosper, Connor Roulette, and Davina McLeod. Uh, thank you to all three of you for speaking with us today. Can you just help me understand what's been going through your mind the last few days as you've watched some of the events unfold in the United States with your family? I live in a very populated Indigenous community, so we've been speaking on it, and we've all experienced it our entire lives. So we feel for them on a really deep level what they're going through, and this is focused on Black Lives Matter, and absolutely, but like we get we get that intel as well of like what they're going through. So we're just trying. I'm just trying to do my best to be an ally to them and to go out of my way to sign petitions and be there in any way that I can and donate and keep up on causes. I'm trying to be active on social media, get connected in that way, and just keep up to date with things that are going on. And I'm just actively trying to look for ways to help. Um, where I live in Winnipeg here, it's um, it hit everyone hard. You know, even if you're not from the Black community, you're from the Indigenous community, any other communities from around the world, everyone's kind of coming together. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to deal with. But at the same time, I feel that it's time for a change. And it's time. It's what everyone's doing. And everyone's doing a really good job of um, taking awareness to it. And trying to stop it so it's it's pretty it's like I said it's, it's hard to deal with. Davina I'm sure there's a lot of Canadians who are watching the protest in the United States and the events in the United States and thinking well things are th thank goodness it's not happening like that in Canada you know we are so much more we're so much more tolerant and diverse and multicultural here. I think that's the biggest problem we have as Canadians is thinking there's some racial barrier between us and them and we're in no way better than them or well off or progressing better than they are. We're just more ignorant to the fact that we think because we're Canadian and we're so nice and everything's in the past that we reconcile like everything about that is just where it has to stop and people have to look at themselves and they have to unlearn what the education system of Canada t told them. And it's their job as people, if we wanna get any type of change to be like, that's not how it is. Canada is not scot-free, like we have issues too. And I think it's time to realize that. Logan, what's the first time that you remember being discriminated against because of how you look? My first year at BAM, I was playing against a team and uh, he, we were winning and he just told me, you know, he told me, you're a dirty native, just go back to your reserve. You don't deserve to be here. And I was pretty far from home already. And it just, you know, I, I kind of just left the game. I didn't want, you know, I even told the referee and there was nothing done. I told the hockey association, you know, hockey Nova Scotia and it was, there was just nothing done. What do you mean there was nothing done? You wrote a letter to Hockey Nova Scotia and they didn't respond to you? What happened? Yeah, they didn't respond. I mean, I never got nothing back. My father didn't get any emails or calls back. Davina, what do you think when you hear Logan's story? My story was like that. I had the evidence, I told the ref and absolutely like, nothing came of it until I pushed and pushed. You have to kind of almost take it with a grain of salt when universities and places say they're with you because if you are, wanting to progress then you should take these matters and not treat them lightly and I think people should get what they deserve if they act out of that way. Well can you be more specific Davina what is your story? Um, I was playing against the Red Deer College Queens when we were battling the puck in the corner and girls chirp in hockey too like we are pretty at it but it's never crossed any type of lines with me like we just stick to the basic stuff so I said something to her and we were going back and forth for a bit. And after the whistle, she got up and she looked at me and she said, shut up, you dirty Indian. And immediately right there, like I'm 22 now. I was 22 during that game. And I feel very strongly about this. So I knew immediately I went and told my teammates. I told the ref. I told my coach during the game. And everyone was absolutely outraged for me. The girl came and apologized after the game, but we and we went through all the precautions to go and forward it to the league so they can deal with it. And they just said that she said sorry and that's good enough. No game suspension until I pushed for it, until I brought it to the news, until I got it a conversation about it going. 
how did you feel when she said that to you? Hurt. I honestly couldn't believe it. It's 2020. I couldn't believe that that's something I still had to go through. It made me sad, mostly because if it's still happening now, I can't even imagine if it's happening to like little kids across the nation, you know? And I, like I, like I said, I'm an adult, like I'm educated and I understand like that where like they're, it's on them more than it's on me, of course. Like it has something to do with them, but I just don't want little kids to have to go through this anymore. And it's ridiculous that they have to. Connor, do you, do you have any firsthand experiences this way? Have you been a victim uh, of this too? Yeah, um, I guess when I was, I think I was 11 or 10, I was playing on a spring team with the Mallard Stars. We are an all, all indigenous hockey team. We kind of got, grabbed gathered up a bunch of kids from different reserves all around Manitoba and we'd go into different spring tournaments and you know showcase our skills and kind of show that you know they were all we're obviously really good hockey players we were a good team and um, we were playing in a tournament and we we made it to finals Um, we had a game against the team that we played in the finals I think the day day prior or something that we beat them in overtime and so we're playing them in the finals and I guess prior to the game the coach was putting $50 bets on some of the kids heads like one of our you know more of our skilled players so we go into the game and I guess we were wearing, we, we were, uh, you know, we weren't that much of a rich team. So all we had was white colored jerseys and the other team had white, their white and red jerseys on, but they made us change into orange, yellow pennies and they weren't, they weren't going to switch into their black jerseys because, you know, it's their, it's their rules is whatever. And they, so we were, we ended up wearing the orange pennies, yellow pennies. And then, so it started off first shift of the game. There was a crazy hit from behind, you know, it kind of started a, started a little brawl there and I guess I knew some of the players on the team I knew their coaches and um you know obviously me not really looking you know and some people might not see me as an indigenous nurse but which I am you know my dad's from Danny Bay First Nation my mom's from Missy Powers to Cree Nation um yeah it started a big brawl and I you know I was kind of frustrated already um I grabbed the puck and shot it and I didn't really mean to shoot at anyone I didn't hit anyone it kind of just you know missed a bit and so uh, the ref right there kicked me out and while I'm skating off the ice. The parents and the coaches on the other team are kind of like leaning over the bench, yelling at me like, you don't deserve to be on this all Indian team, all, a bunch of dirt. They're all from the res. Like, that's not you. You're not them. And like right there, like that's, you know, I'm a 11 year old, 10 year old kid hearing that from coaches and on the other team. And while I'm skating off the ice, I'm hearing parents say, get, go back to the res and all that. So, um, you know, we just ended up forfeiting that game. We didn't want to play. We let the other team win. In the dressing room, we had a big, long talk about, you know, it's, it's, you know, some people don't like to see our type of people, you know, be good at something and they'll do whatever they can to, um, you know, stop us from doing it. And, you know, we looked at our, we looked to our role models, like, you know, Michael Furlan, Ethan Bear, and all those guys, Jordan Tutu in the NHL and said that, that that's what they had to deal with their whole lives. You just said, you know, people rooting against us. Do you guys feel like white Canadians, for the most part, are rooting against indigenous canadians to succeed i think it's a pretty i think it's a pretty common um occurrence where they feel like we get everything handed to us now so as of because everything is in our past in canada so much better now they think that we get all this government handed all this government money handed to us and we don't have to work for a thing so i think that is kind of where they think we have the upper hand now which is completely false Oh, I have a question for Connor, though, as well. Because you're white passing, have you ever, like, been in a room where they talk about natives because they don't know that you are? I know that hasn't happened in the past few years, but obviously when I do play on other teams and all that, there's those jokes and stereotypes that they say about other players on a team or whatever, and I kind of just, I don't really listen, I don't really pay attention, I don't really care, but obviously when it does get to an extent that I'll always step in and, you know, I'll never have a tolerance for it. So I know I had a few incidents where I had to go up to the person and you know, tell them, tell them that we're not, we're not, you know, we're not considered Indians, and that we don't like that, and and that we just uh, we're all here to play. So, do you feel like white Canadians, for the most part, are rooting against Native Canadians, Indigenous Canadians, to succeed? People do root against us. Like they all think Natives, you know, just drink and do drugs. There's a lot of us trying to turn those stereotypes around. You know, like so. Like my parents, like they're boat teachers, you know what I mean? Like they worked hard. They've, they've given me, my brothers and sisters, like there's six, six of us live in a little house and they worked hard to, you know, give us good life and stuff like that. People like my parents are like, who are trying to turn the stereotypes around because 
especially even when like I play hockey, they just tell me right away. They're like, like when they see us doing better in them in hockey, I feel like the first thing they go to is trying to tell us to go back to our reserve and mm-hmm. do what they want us to do. What they see, like you know, the people that are drinking and doing drugs, they want us to be doing that. They just want us to be stuck in our reserve. They don't want us to, you know, get out and change the world like, you know, like Connor and Davina are doing. Logan, when you hear these comments, go back to the reserve. What 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 are you feeling? It hurts me, but like it also drives me to be better. You know what I mean? Like I want to change the world. You know what I mean? That's, I love being here. Like I love the people here and stuff. But I mean, it's just when people tell me to go back, like. I'll go back once I've done something to change the world. You want to change the world. What are your dreams? Really, I want to start off with somehow getting on my Hockey Nova Scotia board to change that because I've looked and there is no other race. It's just, you know, all, it's the whole board. It's all white people. There's no black. There's no, there's not even, I think there's only what one woman on there. Connor, how about you? How can you change the world as you become an adult? Um, well, obviously, I do have a big goal of making it to the NHL, and um, you know I'm working hard for that goal. But until then, you know, if I do ever make it, and if I do ever have a chance to change the world, I want to be able to give um, you know younger Indigenous kids off off and on the reserve a chance to you know get into sports and be able to have a you know be able to set goals in life. Um, you know, most kids who are living up, are living on the reserve don't really have access to a lot of equipment and you know hockey sticks and hockey stuff even you know basketball stuff and all that so I feel like you know if I ever do have the opportunity and uh, I guess you can say like the funds to do it I'll be able to you know help kids on and off reserve uh, have a chance to play and have a chance to get out there and have fun because you know a lot of them aren't you know aren't uh, I guess you can say focused on doing that you know they have other things to do so I feel like if I ever had a chance to do it and change the way that sports have effect, have an effect on Indigenous people and just be able to uh, give kids a chance to play. I definitely want to be involved in Hockey Canada some way, just in hockey with Indigenous players, specifically girls, of course, because I think if anyone needs a voice, it's them. I want to look into being an Aboriginal liaisons officer so I can, you know, have a little bit of say on what happens on our lands and make sure that we're protected and that Canada is always looking out for us and that we're not getting, we're not getting our land taken away any more than we already have. Um, I just want to be a voice. If you, if you think about non-Indigenous Canadians of your age, what's the biggest misperception they have about what it means to be a member of the First Nations? I, it's hard not to go back to the drunk and lazy stereotypes, but I think that they think we're not proud, almost. I think it's honestly being an Indigenous Canadian is just receiving backhanded compliments until you're gone like I've heard so many times like and people trying to be nice to me they're like oh but like you don't act like other natives I've never once thought that slide I think it's just like they just have an idea that we're embarrassed to be native and it's their job to say no 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 it's okay I still like you even though you're native you know when you think about where we are in Canada with our the way that that our government handles first nations and indigenous communities now how much better could and should we be doing? It's like tough to always be like, hey, you should care about us. Like, it's just like mind blowing to think that we have to ask to be considered with the pipelines and with our lands. And like, we have to be like, hey, we use these. This is vital to our community. And people don't know that. Like, people don't know that. There's still people who like actively harvest and like, like I hunt, like my family is huge on hunting and like, Just, I can't even imagine being down in BC and like getting that taken away from them. Connor, there's a lot of misperceptions about what life is like on a reserve. So why don't you just um, explain to people who have not been to one or seen one, what it's like? Well, yeah, um, well, obviously my dad's from Sandy Bay First Nation. My mom's from Missy Powers to Cree Nation. So whenever I go up there, it's, you know, it's really a small, it's tight, it's a small community, but at the same time, it's a lot of people, you know, it's a lot of your family and your cousins, because everyone comes from the same place there, and um, yeah, it's, you know, when you go there, you feel at home, you feel close to the land, you feel like, you know, you're, you're away from the city, you're away from all the kind of social stuff, and you get to go out there and, you know, have fun, we have, the, you know, our sports and all the kids, and 
Um, you know, when I go out there, it isn't, it isn't anything that, you know, people would think it is, it isn't scary. It's not, it's not somewhere where there's a bunch of drugs, there's a bunch of homeless people laying around or whatever. It's, a, you know, it's a bunch of families who live, you know, just, a, it's a regular town. As you guys uh, grew up and got to the point where you'd be spending time away from your families and away from home, was there ever a conversation about how your families wanted you to interact with police? It was more so not cops. It was more so just people like employees at stores or like business owners. If I walked into a store, they would be like, just like make sure that you're not looking suspicious. Just make sure you're not like, make sure you, if you have an item, like, you know, put it in the change room right away or like make sure your hands are always visible because they will be watching you. And I've like felt it. And I've like felt the tension when I do go into certain places when I was younger and I never really understood it because up here, like it, I'm not a minority. So when you, when I went down South, it was kind of like, whoa, like mind blowing, but not with cops specifically. Each of you had a hockey story in terms of being a victim of racism in the hockey context. Is it limited to that? I had a, a coach in grade 12. Um, I went to a hockey school and it wasn't at all what it was advertised. So I decided to leave halfway through the season and I got taken into the coach's uh, office as a 17 year old at the time where he just said, this is why I don't recruit you guys. You're lazy. You quit. You give up. You don't, you don't see anything through. This is how your, this is how your people were. Logan, you started the red tape campaign for people who aren't familiar with it. Can you explain what that is and what the awareness is that you're trying to build? You know, we get red tape and you put it on the end of your stick and like, you know, they have red tape games to raise awareness of racism, to let, you know, let people know racism is still alive in, you know, not only our country, but the world. I heard about that during my season this year. Oh, I'll absolutely be enforcing that next season. And I know my teammates are going to be full force behind me with that movement. I haven't heard about it until just now, but I'll definitely be looking it up. I think that's incredible. Um, how old are you, Logan? Oh, I'm 17. 17 that yeah, yeah that's very impressive for a 17 year old especially for it to be getting the traction that it is to hear about it all the way in the whl I was, it's been reaching out to you know universities that i've gone to a saint mary university they had a red tape game and they put up the Mi'kmaq flag in the rink can you think of anything that white canadians can do better Asking questions um, to Indigenous people is okay. Um, I think it's important to state that it's not our job to educate people who want to do better. And I think if they did want to do better, they have to take it upon themselves to research. There's tons of books, there's tons of resources, especially now with this movement. You've, there's never been more resources on Twitter, on any type of social media, where it's like, if you want to do better, read this book, read this article. Um, get involved in, with this organization, kind of do your part without having to come to me to be like, hey, can you teach me? Because that's not my job.